So about the police brutality, it's um, one of those sensitive topics um, that I find myself seated on the fence. On the one side, I'm always like, fuck the police! But then, but then looking at what I experienced yesterday when I was in town. So yesterday, I was in town at around 11, and I made sure that by 3, I was out. So my observation when I was there, first of all, there was no social distancing. Second, I literally saw only three people wearing a mask. I didn't have a mask myself, so I'm not judging anyone. But literally only three people had a mask on. Um, I didn't see anyone in gloves, I didn't see anyone practicing anything, to be honest. What, um, but that was not my issue. My issue was the numbers that were in town, for whatever reason, whether it's work or just idle, the numbers were very big. Like, I thought I'll just come in, then I'll just find like, you know, parking Yakanjo. I was like, I'll just park anywhere, there's not gonna be people. Shock on me, I did not find any parking. No parking, like town was that full. There was no parking. So I had to park like at a private, a private parking area. And then, you know the place, Unagakan walk, just opposite um, Uchumi, where Uchumi is. There's usually this place, like, like a jobless corner of some kind, where people are always just sitting. You'll be surprised, it was full. Like, I could not believe my eyes. It was full of people. And no one was like keeping distance. Uh, people are just seated, like together, like sardines. And preachers were still preaching. Then those people who are always in, in Tao doing some magic tricks or whatever thing that they're teaching people, they still had crowds. Well, not a big crowd as usual, but, but a crowd nonetheless. And by then, it was almost three o'clock. Myself, I was panicking. I was like, I need to, finish up with my errands because I need to leave town. I don't want the curfew to get me here. And this is someone who's coming who's coming into town with a car. I'm thinking, what about these other people who are just literally just sitting? Yes, I understand there's some people who, who are working. They're in town because they're working. But honestly, there are so many idlers on the other hand. That's why, that, that's why I'm like, well, why were you in town in the first place? As I was saying, there are so many idle people in town. Like, why are you st standing watching some person doing some magic trick or whatever it is that they're doing? Or why are you seated there listening to a preacher? I mean, that preacher can be preaching in the estates. They don't have to be preaching at home. There's some people basically that were just, they're non-essential workers. You know, like you don't need to be in town. For example, um, parking boys. These guys who, like, they say they're watching your car. We do not need you in town at this point. I mean, usually we just, usually I know it's, it's, a, it's a way of getting money and I know someone is going to come at the comments and be like, oh, you're talking from privilege and people are trying to make money. I understand. We are all trying to make money. Even me, I am trying to make money. There are so many shops that are selling clothes and shoes that are closed. They also want to make money, but they understand that we are not operating in the same uh, normal situation. So extreme times, extreme measures. So those guys have closed their shops. To be honest, people who make nails like uh, hairdressers for example even my own hairdresser has already closed down you know because there's going to be a lot of contact that's one two you're not an essential worker you don't have to be in town you don't have to be selling especially if you're in the service industry especially if in, in the service industry like i find um i saw so many hawkers as well um selling food the ones that were selling food i was actually supporting i was even buying some of the food items because Food, again, is, it's a necessity. So if you're selling food, if you're a pharmacist, you know, you're opening a chemist, that, that's understandable. So I do understand that people are trying to make money, but please let us only leave town for people who have actual jobs, actual things that they're doing in town. Because you can't say, you can't say you're that idle corner because you're looking for a job. What job are you looking for in this economy, in this time, in this world? There are no jobs. Actually, people are getting laid off. So you can't be saying, una kuja kujitaftia, una tafta nini, unless you, you, act, you have actual work, don't go to town. Because I believe these are the same people that are causing the transport crisis. First of all, half the matatus are not even working. Like, morning to evening, like they're not going into the roads. The other 50% that is working are only carrying at 50% capacity. So if you could leave this space for the essential workers, for the people who have actual jobs, they have actual reasons to go to town, then we won't have this crisis. But then, and I know, like, for example, in, uh, in Mombasa at the ferry, they started beating people up at like five. So I hear, I mean, I was not in Mombasa, so I cannot say the condition in Mombasa. I don't know what happened or triggered it. Some people are saying they started throwing stones to the, uh, at the police. That's why the police were retaliating. I don't know, I wasn't there. So I can only talk about whatever was happening in town. And the brutality, the beating up was not, 
it, it, it was unacceptable that I have to say it was unacceptable um some people are bleeding some people are running you know like you're, you're chasing an, an old woman with tear gas it was just, it was excessive but what I believe is that today on a Saturday there's not there's not going to be as many people or there will be no one at all I think they just had to take that measure on day one to our to you know just just so that people know we are not playing like the government is not playing I think they were just trying to make people really really know that this is serious but then on the other extreme side um, I remember when I came from town I went straight to ShopRite here um, in Karen and they, they had a notice they said that they were closing shop at five so I was like oh five five seems to be a good time um, a good time to like uh, close the shop but then when I got home I was thinking okay if they're closing the shop at five they're closing shop at five then it means they're going to take at least an hour especially for the cashiers to do the cash up you know like they need to balance the books they need to do all that and that which means going to take them like an extra hour an extra hour to do that which means they're leaving work at around six so if you're working in Karen and you live in Kayole and you're leaving work at six what time are you be getting home? Will you be getting home? No way you're going to be making it at seven. Okay, I'll be I'll be fair. I don't know if Shoprite was uh, was dropping off their employees. I don't know if that was the case. But if they were using public transport, then definitely they are, they are going to be caught in that melee, and that would have been that would have been really really unfair if that is indeed the case that happened to them. I do understand that some people are genuinely coming from work, and they were being let off. Some people are being let off as early as four. But still, there was no transport, you know. Um, so it's it's a bit it's tricky. It's fifty fifty. That's why I said I'm really sitting on the fence when it comes to this. Um, so that so I feel like the the only thing that would work right now that that would would make this more efficient then would be a total lockdown. Just the same way that they're doing in South Africa. Um, the same way, the same way that they're doing in South Africa. Like there's no they they're not even allowed to go out to job. Like you can't even stretch your legs. That's that's how serious it is in South Africa. There's no sale of alcohol. There's no sale of cigarettes. And I'm sure if they introduce such a thing in Kenya, guys will be like, yeah, but cigarettes. We are going to be suffering withdrawal. We're going. There's always some excuse somewhere. But what people are not understanding is we're trying to beat this. We're trying to we're trying to curb this this uh, this pandemic. I mean, this is America. America is preparing by building mortuaries that's what they're doing and when you see a government building a mortuary they know something that you don't that's why they're preparing for this they're they're basically preparing for death that is what they're doing and if america with all their capacity is doing that imagine this thing in africa or in kenya we're not going to be able to handle it so yeah i do support a total lockdown i feel like this is the only way um um we're going to, to handle this and the people like, for example, in South Africa, what they're doing is the people in low income areas, they provide them with food and water. So I'm sure the government has the money. It has the money. They can do it. They don't have to support everyone in this country, but they can support a, a small percent, you know, a small percent who can, who, who really do not have, for example, street children, you know, they don't have anywhere to go. They don't have anywhere to eat. The government, I'm sure they have the capacity to support that. And in the end, this is not to support, um, this is not to support the government but as kenyans we already know how brutal and how bad and such animals that our police are we knew this was going to be happening we knew guys are going to guys are going to be humiliated guys are going to be beaten up things are going to be bad we already knew about it we had three days to prepare for this so as much as as guys are saying you're coming from work we're doing this and that what what or what if when the total lockdown comes in what will you say then will you still be going to work and there's a total lockdown how are you going to eat so let's not let's not um put our blame fully on the police the police is also just trying to make things work the only problem with them is every time not just this time but every time they use excessive force and it's 100 percent totally totally unacceptable that was not the way to treat the monanchi but then again on the other hand kenyans nivichuangumu we already know that like we just have people who will not follow the law it doesn't matter what happens they will not follow the law um if you if you did if you took history back in high school and you had a good history teacher the way the way that i do he told us about the coup back in 82 and how things were bad. Like he was just drawing pictures of how things were bad, drawing pictures in our minds. And when I heard that there was a curfew, I was like, don't joke with this thing. Do not joke. My uncle used to work in Garissa and in Garissa, when there's a curfew, 
people know it's serious. Like no one jokes around. If they tell you the curfew is at four, my friend, everyone is in. Everyone is in the house. So I guess Nairobians were just, they didn't, they didn't quite understand the gravity of the situation. They didn't quite understand that a curfew means that some of our basic laws don't really apply. You know, they didn't quite understand that. So you're going to be hurt, you're going to be beaten, you're going to be saying, I know my rights. They don't give a shit. And who are you going to be reporting it to anyway? Will you report to the police? When you go to the police, they'll be like, yeah, but we told you to be in your house by seven. That's it. There's nothing else you're going to say. So let's, to be, to be, to be on the safe side, just to be on the safe side, just follow the, just follow the, 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 the rules right now. It's not going to take, it's, this is not going to go on forever. That's the good news. It's not going to go on forever. Put it this way, the worst that can happen with a lockdown, say for example, a 21 day lockdown, is a few people can die of hunger, of which this is a stretch. I'm not saying people are going to die of hunger because they've gone for 21 days or 14 days without eating. But the other extreme is if we do not follow these measures and people continue doing whatever they feel like doing, millions are going to die not just in Kenya but also in Africa and why do I say millions because if the states cannot handle it and then the thousands definitely Africa is times two times two whatever they have or even times ten whatever they have so let's just follow the law I mean like I said I usually don't support the police I'm usually like fuck the police but this time we just we just have to follow the rules we, we have to I'm sorry I know we never like listening to to guidance and what what is being told I'm also one of those people but for once I'm like yo this thing is serious and if the government is putting us is putting us on uh, on a curfew they definitely know more than we do they definitely definitely know more than we do so let's just follow whatever they're telling us you know it's unfair and however however you however way you look at it someone is bound to lose it, there's no winning basically at the end of the day there's no winning no one is going to win no one is going to win. Please stay safe. Um, corona is real. Corona is here. I was joking about it, but now I'm like, woof. Ha 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 This is serious. Um, but anyways, I will see you. I will see you tomorrow. God willing. Bye.